You've probably heard the term always be closing if you've ever been in sales, but it also applies to the golf swing as well. So basically, let's go over what exactly opens and closes the club face in the golf swing. There's essentially three things. Number one is the release of the club. So if I'm coming down here and I early release the club, right, meaning I'm kind of flipping at it as I'm coming through, you can see that that closes the club face. If I release the club later, right, I have my hands more in front and I release the club more out in front, at impact, my face is gonna be more open. So that's number one that opens and closes the face. An early release closes the club face, a later release opens the club face. The second thing that controls the club face angle is the rotation of the shaft, right? So that's gonna come from mostly our wrist angles, right? So if I do this throttling move with my wrists, you can see how that closes the club face. If I go kind of that reverse throttling move, you can see how that opens the club face. So with my lead wrist, what's happening is, is I'm flexing my lead wrist. This is called wrist flexion. Some people might call it bowing of, of that lead wrist. And with my trail wrist, I'm extending it back. Some people might call that cupping, and that closes the club face. If I do the opposite, if I cup this lead wrist, that's what's called wrist extension. That's going to open the club face as I'm coming through. And then if I kind of flatten out my trail wrist, you can see that that's also going to open the club face. All right, so closing it down and opening up by virtue of rotating the shaft. The last piece is the lie angle of the club. So if you look here, if I have this club flat, you know, the sole of the club flat to the turf here, and I raise the handle, you can see how that opens up the club face. If I lower the handle, you can see how that closes the club face. Now I will say this usually isn't a one, isn't one you really need to worry about. It's more about those first two because if those first two are good, a lot of times that lie angle is gonna take care of itself. Usually it's pretty difficult to release the club properly and then have the, the lie angle really high. It usually just doesn't work together. So usually that one is, is not going to be happening. So what tour players are doing is they're releasing this club later, right? So they're opening the face by virtue of the release as they're coming into contact. So that means that they need to be always be closing with the rotation of the shaft. Now, there are some really easy ways to do that. that I'm gonna show you how to do right here. So number one is with your grip. I prefer a stronger grip for most people because it just makes it a lot easier. This is all gonna make sense here in a second, but that's usually gonna make it a lot easier for a lot of people. So if you imagine, if I take this club, let's say I have a weak grip. So if I have a weak grip, that means that my thumbs are basically kind of in line with the ping logo on this grip. So that'd be more of like a weak grip and the face is straight up and down there. So now if I take this, this shaft and I loosen my grip and I turn that logo, let's say I turn it about 45 degrees, now you can see that face is closed, I re-grip the club. Well look, I've already rotated the shaft and I don't have to do anything. I, have, I don't have to do anything in my swing to make that happen. That face is just rotated down and that just makes things a lot easier. I think a lot of people go away from the weak grip or, or go away, excuse me, from the stronger grip because it's just more comfortable at a dress to have a weaker grip. And I agree, if you just have your arms kind of hanging straight down, it's just, it's just way more comfortable to have your thumbs just kind of like this and hanging straight down. But a dress isn't really the most important thing in the golf swing. The most important thing in the golf swing is impact. We need to be able to get ourselves into a good impact position. And it's a heck of a lot easier to get yourself in a good impact position where the hands are in front with shaft lean when we have a stronger grip. So I'd strongly recommend that you have a stronger grip. Here's a e very easy way to help you get a stronger grip. Just set up the way that you normally would, loosen your grip, and then turn the, the handle, you know, about 45 degrees in your hand, 30, 45 degrees, somewhere in there, then re-grip the club, then square back the face. Now, when you do that, what you're gonna find is you're probably gonna be a little bit more comfortable with having your hands a little bit more in front at impact. And that is 100% fine. If you're comfortable with having, with, with having the hands more like this, it's not a very comfortable thing for me, but if that's more comfortable for you, that's also 100% fine uh, as well. There's lots of tour players that are like that as well. But a lot of tour players, Dustin Johnson included, will have a strong grip and then will have their hands a little bit more in front um, at impact compared to somebody else who might have a weak grip. But let's say, hey, I don't want that strong grip. I don't want to do that. Well, that's 100% fine, 
If you do, then we have to be doing other things in the swing to close the club face, and we have to do that with our wrist angles. So like I said, there are tour players as well that have weak grips. Victor Hovland, Colin Morikawa, these are a couple guys that have weak grips. And when you have a weak grip, what you have to do is you have to be bowing the, the lead wrist and extending back the trail wrist throughout the swing in order to accommodate that. If you look at those guys' swings, if you go on YouTube and look at those guys' swing, you're going to see that they have a lot of bowing in their wrists. When you look at Colin Morikawa at impact, he looks like this. And he has to, otherwise he won't be able to get that tour level shaft lean and compression on the ball and square the face with getting the release out in front if they don't have those wrist angles with that weak grip. So that's why I recommend strengthening that grip. So just set up, loosen the grip, close the club face, regrip the club, then square back up the face. So that's number one. Now, in the beginning stages, if you're new to this closing the face with, by rotating the shaft and you've been closing the face by virtue of early releasing the club for a long time, I want you to do both. I want you to see what works best for you. Let's do both to the extreme and let's see what works. So let's get a really strong grip by doing what I just talked about. And then let's also, let's feel that face closing throughout the swing. So as I mentioned, that closing of the club face is gonna come from bowing the lead wrist and extending back the trail wrist. So I want you to feel that throughout several points in the swing. So I want you to get that strong grip and I want you to get that club face pointing to the ground about right here, about halfway back in the back swing. So you can see here, my lead wrist is bowed and my trail wrist is extended back. Then I want you to go up to the top and feel that same thing. I want you to feel the emblem of your glove pointing up to the sky and the palm of your hand pointing up to the sky. You can see there, I've got some good bowing in my wrist. You can see that club face is very closed. And then I want you to come down here and I want you to feel again like that club face is pointing down toward the ground. We're closing that emblem of the glove pointing down toward the ground. We're bowing that lead wrist, extending back that trail wrist. Then we're gonna come to impact, lots of shaft lean square club face. Then we're gonna come around into the full finish. Do lots of reps. You can do this in the house, in the office. Do lots of reps, really getting comfortable, bringing that club back, really close with a strong grip. And that's just gonna promote everything you want at impact. All right, now that you're able to do this in a practice swing, we're able to get this club face, we're able to get this strong grip, this club face really close in the back swing, in the down swing. We need to be able to put this in action. And what I want you to do now is do the tennis racket drill combined with this. So the tennis racket drill is an awesome drill to help you to start shallowing out the club. And what you do with the tennis racket drill, what I want you to do is place this stick, an alignment stick, in front of your golf ball along with your target line. So this is just something I made, block of wood, put, put a drill the hole in it, put an alignment stick through it, and with the noodle here, if you got some ground to stick it in, this works out just fine. But what we want to do is we want to get this ball to start to the right of this stick. If we do, then we know that we're, if we're getting the club face closed and we get that ball to start to the right of the stick, that means that we're getting the hands in front. Now, in order to be able to do that, this is a great drill to get you started, but in order to be able to do that, we have to be shallowing out the club. We've got to get this club working from the inside as I'm, as I'm starting down. If I'm coming down steep and over the top and I close the face, there's no way I'm gonna get this ball to start to the right of that stick. I have to get this club shallowing out. And the best drill to do that is the tennis racket drill. So if you haven't seen our tennis racket drill, I highly recommend you click, you click on the iCard here that's gonna appear up on your screen. If you don't see the iCard, no worries. Click the link below in the video, but click on the iCard and that's gonna give you the link to the whole drill. If you wanna see a preview of the drill, I'm gonna play a preview of it here just in a second. But if you wanna see the whole drill and pair it up with what we're doing here, you're gonna start hitting the most compressed shots of your life. You're gonna have that pro-like impact position that everyone, that everyone really wants, right? Everyone wants that position at impact that Colin Morikawa and Dustin Johnson are in. And that can be accomplished if we get that club shallowing out, we get that club face closing, and we get the hands in front. So like I said, click that link in the description or click the i card above that'll take you to the tennis racket drill and combine that with this play well and i'll talk to you soon good player problems we're going to talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video as we start this downswing what you'll see with with basically all of the the top players is instead of coming 
kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body. Again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it. The flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be rotating.